on March 11, 2020, I made a tweet about these three different stylized material, and one of which was heavily inspired by the opening from the video game Kirby Star Allies. And in this video, I'm going to be walking you guys through how exactly I went about creating this material. There are three things to keep in mind. Number one is that this isn't necessarily a tutorial video, but rather just a video of me walking through slash summarizing the different steps of what I did in order to achieve this material. Things such as how I went about separating the different color values in order to modify them to become flat colors on the existing texture and creating things like the outline and the shadow. Um, so while it's not necessarily a tutorial, you can still follow along and pick up a few things here and there. Number two, unlike my other videos on creating materials, this isn't actually fully procedural as I'm actually going off of an existing texture that I have for Kirby and like I said, changing the different color values to make them flat. Number three, what I just realized making this video is that the easiest thing to have done was to just recreate the textures in Photoshop, put it onto the model, and then add the outline and the shadow effect from there. Why I didn't do that before is beyond me, but hey, this is something I kind of did that I was kind of impressed that I managed to do years ago. And actually, uh, funny enough, this is what the whole setup looked like before. And while going through it about a month ago, this is what it looks like now. I basically cleaned up a whole bunch of stuff, um, tweaking a few things here and there. And yeah, I'm just going to be showing you guys all the different steps that I did in this video. Anyways, without further ado, let's begin. We'll start with the simple things. By using our lighting and shadow data to create a comic style shading effect, we'll then create our outline around our character. And finally, we'll turn our character textures that look as flat as possible by identifying the different color values and modifying them as different masks or layers. For my material, I'm going to avoid using any sort of gloss or subsurface that is showing because I don't want the color or the texture of my character to look as flat as possible. However, I still need the shadows. So in order to do this, I'm going to use the Toon BSDF shader which allows the material to get a cartoon-like effect with the lighting by using a diffusing glossy property. I can adjust the size of the shadow and light intake on the surface, as well as the smoothness. I'll then plug it back into the shader to RGB node, because I still want to adjust the style of the shader, or sorry, of the shadow from the Tune BSDF shader. I then further adjusted the strength of my shadow using a math and a color ramp node. We can later come back to adjust these settings as needed, so now let's create the style of our shadow. We want to achieve that dots look for the shadow and have it gradually shrink as the shadow smooths in towards the light. Let's start by creating the dots for the shadow using the Voronoi texture node for our constant shape. The camera data node is there to adjust in the information relative to the camera point. So for example, normally this would be the shader from two different distances without the camera data. But with the camera data, we can make the dots on the shader consistent like this, no matter how close or how far the camera is. Once we've done that, we just have to apply the shadow data and the dots information together with a math node using the greater than function. That way I can adjust the color of the dots and blend it over our material. You can actually use the less than function, but just remember to use the corresponding blend type depending on if the color behind the dots is either black or white. Then you can either use a mix RGB node or a color ramp node to adjust the color of the wheel. I just use a color ramp, either works honestly. Then just use another mix RGB node to combine our shadow and our current material. Now it's time to create our outline. I actually made a very short in-depth tutorial on my last video on how to create an outline for your material using no solidify modifier and using no sort of post-processing effect. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below or I'll have it pop up as a clickable video or some sort of box uh, at the end of the video. Uh, but to summarize, I used a Fresnel on my material as the base of my outline and just solidified it with a simple color ramp slider. I then applied it over my whole material with another mixed RGB node, and you can also adjust the thickness of the outline with these nodes, or an additional one like a math node. And now that we have our outline and our shadows created, it's now time to convert our texture into nothing but simply flat colors and no shading. Sort of like a cell shaded, I guess? I don't know. But uh, I started off by using a separate color node, or if you're using an older version of Blender, it would be called the separate RGB node instead. This was just my way on going about modifying each part of the texture, as I can adjust the different parts of the colors at a time. But because my texture included colors like pink, which is a combination of red and white, but the cheeks and eyes also consisted of either red or white, the process was kind of insanely tedious. 
but for example it was a game of separating the colors blender thought had red and green values in it away from blue values and only touching those blue areas just for an example oh but speaking of which uh, in this example right here, I did just that. I subtracted the red and green values from the texture only to leave what Blender detected blue. I then threw a color ramp node onto the mix to adjust the sensitivity of Blender detecting those blue values since those blue values kind of blend through different areas of the texture. And this is kind of like feathering a color in and out with Photoshop or a video editing program when you're trying to create a green screen or a blue screen as a background. If we also take a look over here, all I did was separate the red values, which basically only leaves just the eyes, using a color ramp node to feather the values, and then combined it with other nodes, which I used to find the white values, aka the pupils, to create a mask, which allowed me to change the color of Kirby without having to affect the eyes, as I would create my own flat shaded eyes as mentioned from the previous example. Which by the way, all I did was find the white values again, and then blended it on top of the blue area. Oh, and the same process uh, with the cheeks. Once you have everything done, it's all just a matter of blending the different layers of colors on top of each other using mixed RGB nodes. And this is the final result. This ginormous node tree some sort of thing. So to quickly summarize, all this process was was separating the different color values in order to modify them into different flat color layers or masks and also creating our own outline using the Fresnel data and our shadows using the camera data and a Voronoi texture node. I made this entire material uh, for Kirby and then I decided to create my own designs with it. You can actually get those designs on my new shop at 2EasyCG.com slash shop or 2EasyCG.com slash quality trash. Uh, it's some sort of new merch that I just put up uh, recently actually and by the time this video is being announced, this is the launch, I guess, of the first day that I'm actually making this thing public at least. Uh, it's actually been on the website for a while but I just haven't promoted it. Um, you can get whatever designs related to 3D artist or anything related to Kirby and I'll also have different fairs which will be exclusive designs that I'll sell for cheap prices I guess uh, yeah I also have an Instagram for this it's quality trash apparel the link for everything will be in the description below as well for the shop so hopefully all of this information wasn't too much in your face but hopefully you did at least pick up something that was of sort of value or something that you kind of learned from this uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new like I said earlier if you did be sure to leave a like on this video so that more people can find this video on their recommendations and if you want to see more sort of tutorials related to how to create materials and other different effects in Blender, uh, you can go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I really do appreciate it as I make these kind of tutorials here and there. Uh, so yeah, and also Kirby content too? Like Kirby 3D content, I mean, not like games or whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.